All right, I want you guys to go uh, support Piston Mike. Y'all go to the subscribe button. He at 480 right now. Let's get him to 1,000, 100,000, 500,000, million subscribers as soon as possible, Ben. Let's help him put it down. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. If you like the Pistons, you want to support me, think about sending me a donation. The uh, best way you can help me right now is go subscribe over to Piston Mike and go uh, help him get his numbers up, putting in work, hard work, smart work, dedicated work, consistent work. So make sure you go over there and appreciate that work. So remember the name is Piston Mike and I have a link in the description. If you have a problem, uh, find it on YouTube. It'll be under source link or Piston Mike channel link in the description. Peace. All right, man. Let's talk about Kenneth Walker the third burning up the combine. Also, I just seen Jordan Davis just burnt up the combine. He ran what? What did he say? His name? <clears throat> the dude, the big fella from Arbor. Hopefully, I get his name wrong. They say he just ran. He's six six and three eighths on height. And Jordan Davis, three hundred forty one pounds. He ran a four eight two and a four point six eight ten yard split. Right. Comparison, J.J. Watt is a 6'5", 3 eighths, 290. So think about that, 290. He's like, what, more than like 50, almost 50 pounds lighter than him. 491 at the combine at 1.71. Davis is an athlete. Jordan Davis is an elite athlete i'm gonna talk about him too he is an elite athlete and you know you talk about mcneil and you know when you talk about guys that big and i'm gonna start off with uh kenneth walker do them he played at michigan state but i'm gonna say this real quick when you start off with somebody that big bro you start with somebody that big the question is can he keep himself in shape now you look at a guy like Indomit and sue um, a little different because he he got he kind of got that body that he not he not you know Sue gonna be around three hundred the way he built. But with him, can he keep his body in check for the rest of his career at three forty one? But we are gonna talk about the fit and all that in a minute. Kenneth Walker burned up the combine. I seen him run a four six unofficial, but apparently he can be stopped. Hold on, you ain't gonna show this. Apparently. He ended up coming back and or it turned to unofficial. The unofficial was wrong, or he ran a 4-3-8 in the second try. He ran a 4-4-6 unofficial his first try. I didn't see his second try. Um, but he came around and ran a 4-3-8 officially. 5-9, 2 11, 9 and a half inch arms, 3 and 3 eighths. Not really worried about the arm length from a, 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 a receiver. You know, and number one thing you're gonna get from local guys, you're getting it from Aiden Hutchinson. A lot of the Michigan fans won't have eight hushes on the Lions. I'm not one of them, and I'm a Michigan fan. But you know what, man? I like to have this guy. But I think he's going to go a little bit high. I think after this combine, he's going to be flirting with the end of the first, beginning of the second. Now, just doing my hypothesis, I been, I just really just scratched the surface, so I don't really know what the pool of players are like yet as far as evaluating, which I can't get to everybody. Nobody can, right? Well, <clears throat> a lot of people can't. Um, you get the, you got the pool of players, but um, he looks to be special. Seeing him play at Michigan State, I mean, putting him on that turf. A lot of people like DeAndre Swift, you know what I'm saying? Um, Craig Reynolds is a dog. Jamal Williams pretty good. Um, but like I said before, if I can get something from Jamal and DeAndre Swift, they'd be gone. And no, per not personal. I love Jamal Williams. And I like DeAndre Swift. But like I said before, running backs don't get healthier in DeAndre Swift case. Um, I'd rather go young with Walker and Reynolds. And Inabuki, I don't mind. So I've seen the article saying Inabuki should come back. He just switched to running back one season, and he can play safety if you have to. So any good special teams player, don't make no sense. Jamar Jefferson, when he flat, when he was able to, you know, be healthy, flash. So I mean, obviously you want an older, you want an older statesman in the, in the running back room. So I think you would have to keep Jamar Williams. So I'm not mad at that, but yeah, I, you know, like I said, if they don't, if they're not going to utilize T.J. Hawkinson, trade him. You got two years, two years left. You know, if you're going to utilize him, keep him. But they haven't been utilizing him, even when the head coach is a, uh, head coach is a tight end. They haven't been really getting the most out the lesser Hawkinson. Running the scene, post corners, moving around, bunching them up, lining them in the backfield, splitting them out wide, putting them in the slot, lining them off the line of the receiver. You know, they haven't been creative enough for me for him. 
to justify a top 10 pick. And that's not on his part. He's produced. He's been injury prone too. You know, so that's something to look at too. But, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, a situation where we talked about earlier, getting back in the top 10 or getting back in that top five range. I think, you know, um, you know, you got to ask yourself, if you're going for uh, – Kibble on Willis, you know, because I don't think Willis going to drop below seven. I mean, it's interesting. I think it's worth it. But if you can say, you know what, if I can get that 10 range and take Jordan Davis there, I mean, I don't know. You know, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how that attack is one second. It's going to be interesting because they can use somebody like Jordan Davis, you know. But, you know, Kenneth Walker, if everything stand pat, you know, unless they give up a, a first, two first next year and move back in the top 10, you know, that's be a lot to ask. You know, you really got to like somebody, really has to be like Jordan Davis and keep 32nd. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Um, love to see Walker on the field, but at this point, he is a, 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 he's a luxury more than an essential ball player. You know, that's the question. You know, local guy, you know, uh, you better than Hutchinson than me, just that. Hudson play a more dominant position, but you know, out of the local guys coming out to me, the ones I've seen, you know, he's the best coming out of the state of Michigan in college. He's the best, you know, athletic. And then, you know, you just think about it, you got to prioritize your needs, you know, because you get a running back third, fourth, fifth round. Yeah. You know, high quality guy, fast, quick, you know, but then again, you know, let's say you do bring back Walker and Amani, you know, you still got needs at, uh, Inside linebacker, you got still got knees at the end. You still got knees at D line. You still got knees at receiver. You know what I'm saying? You still got knees at right guard. Those are your big knees. You know, could you take a chance on Walker at the second? I mean, yeah, you could if you want to, because you're gonna have 30 second if you keep everything packed. 30 second, and then you'll be able to come back and take both of them. Could you move down and pick up extra picks and then still get Walker? Possibly. So, I mean, they have a lot of flexibility. They're going to have some compensatory picks in the, what, fourth, fifth, or sixth, possibly the seventh round. Some combination, though. I think maybe in third, too. So, they have some compensatory picks there, too. You know, so, I mean, I just think at this point, man, they still best player available. Quarterback being the most pressing need. I don't care what nobody say. And then best player available being the next pressing need. You know, they're not going to be close, honestly. You know, if they are closed, then, I mean, it is. But I'm not expecting a huge leap in wins. I'm not expecting 10 wins, 11 wins, 7 wins. Maybe 7 wins at the most is what I'm expecting next year. I see how the team kind of form up. Then I can't give it better. Um, but, I mean, if you feel he good and you feel he, he features your character, Bill, you feel he feel in the backfield, I mean, like I said, they got more players to play. They got a pool of players to trade. They got a pool of players to bring back. You know, Josh Reynolds and Charles Harris got to be at the top of that list. Outside of Monty Rara and Tracy Walker, if we all get them on and everybody contract friendly, that's fine. Because you need Reynolds to be the, the number two. He's a good number two, stretch the field. You need a Ma Ra to be in the slot working his thing. Them two combined could pass a number two receiver. Two twos. You know what I'm saying? Then you bring back Hawkinson, who could be a number one target. Then you plug in somebody nice. So they, they got some, they got some choices to make. But then you never walk or so be. I like George Pickens from Georgia. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's up to them, bro. It's going to be very interesting. But, you know, if you feel like he, the place that you pick him at, he good there. So be it. Some guys is injured. Uh, Derek Stingley had a Liz Frank injury. If you get to 32nd in, in, or, or you get to your second round pick and Stingley there, you know, I mean, hate to keep drafting injury players, but, you know, the talent, especially if you ain't bring back a Marnie or Aurier, or you're going to tag him, which is going to like the talent there is just, mm. You know what I'm saying? If you get him in second, you end up getting, you know, Davis in the back half. I say you let's say somehow you move up, get Davis. It's gonna be it's gonna be they got a lot of interesting choices. You know, the Florida State pass rush are pretty good. I mean, you got a lot of guys, you know, you're hearing about, but there's some guys that are starting to stick out, starting to separate themselves. Willis, Kibido, uh, Aiden Hudson refused to do the bench press after Graham Glasgow raised how strong he was in the weight room. I don't know why he refused to do the bench press, his arms were short. But uh, Kayvon Kibbeto put up 27 reps. It was a run. Who put up 27 reps? It was somebody that put up 27 reps. A skill position uh, player. I forget. Somebody put up 27 reps. I forget who it was. Oh, oh, uh, Hassan Haskins from Michigan. Hassan Haskins from Michigan. 
Yeah, he put 27 reps from a running back. I, mean, I can expect that from him, bro. He's strong as shit. <laughs> so when you're looking at a kid like this, bro, he's special, bro. Spe special kid, man. I wish the best for him. When those, if he turned out to be elite, we don't get him. It is what it is. I really ain't uh mad about what's the best for him, man. Even though if he is a Sparty, I wish the best for him, man. And um, this this dude right here is, is amazing. I mean, somehow you got Kibido, Willis, and Jordan Davis. That is a miracle. Or in uh the kid from uh, uh Kenneth Walker, that's a lot of explosion right there. If you somehow add three of those four, all four of those four, two of those is explosive. Explosive 6'6, 341, 34 inch arms, 10 and three quarters uh, uh, hands. He ran a 478. Hold on, this dude ran a 478. So, if, and I, I know, I guess that might be that might be a second run, or that might be his second unofficial. That might be official 478. No bridge press, nothing. Like, I don't need to know how strong he is. I know how strong he is. So, Another guy that's special. So, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. A dude that big, and he, he even ran faster than the second time. You know, you put him on the D-line, you just figure it out with Lee McNeil. You just have to figure it out. It seemed like you might be able to lead him in in passing situations. <laughs> and that's what it seemed like. It seemed like you might be able to put him in on passing situations. And if that's the case, him and Lee could play together on a 4 3 4 or a 3 4 front. Excuse me. They, I mean, they could play together. Seriously, that means they literally could play together. And McNeil's a good athlete, too. I mean, you might have to make that happen, bro. You literally might have to make that happen. You know what I'm saying? And he he might rise into that top 10. You might have a decision to make. You miss out on Hutchinson. You miss out on Kibodo. You move back up in the top 10. You, I mean, shit, he ain't a bad, you know, he ain't a bad consolation prize. Trust me. <laughs> you won't be disappointed. You just got to, you know, you know, he don't look like, you know, big sloppy guy. He looks solid, but, you know, as we get older, the bone density changes. And, you know, you always have to ask the question when you get guys that big, you know, um, You gotta ask those questions, you know. Will he, will he, you know, will he be, you know, will he continue to be in shape? You know, Vince Wolford was able to, you know, keep his stuff in, in check for years. You know what I'm saying? So, want to make sure he gonna, he gonna uh, stay solid. <laughs> That's the only downside, and it's actually something that he can change. You know, it's actually something that that's in his hands. You know, you just gotta know how discipline is. You're gonna ask coaches, you're gonna ask, you're gonna do your investigations. And you are, you're gonna do your you're gonna do your investigations. So they 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 will investigate him. They will investigate him. So so I mean long as you as long as he check out as far as you know, uh you know, with his weight and all his discipline, man, he gonna get he gonna be top ten, bro. He gonna be top ten. So I mean, he might be high in the ten. He might creep to top five, man. But it been so many big fellas that's been bust. Dana Wilkerson, who really ain't, you know, a lot of big guys that go that high. You know, you usually take pure pass rushers. You know, but we look at some of his stats. Let's see. We look at some of his stats. He got a lot of tackles for loss. Had seven sacks last year. Um, let me stop this real quick. I make sure I ain't show no videos. You know, you like to show some videos. Yep, told you. So let's see if we get these stats. Um. Okay. So it, it's this been this year so far. 32 total tackles, 17 solo, 15 assisted, one pass to flick. No, these can't be right, is they? 
I don't know. These are the ones they showed up. Two sides? I thought they said seven sides. Maybe that's all in all. Yeah, I don't know. They ain't the ones they show. Maybe it's just career stats. So. Yeah, that's just career stats, seven. So. I mean, hell of a player, though, man. Hell of a player, man. Last year, 17 solos. I mean. One thing you gonna know, man. You you know he be he gonna pitch that line, gonna be in a backfield. But him and Levi and Zorky, you know, work good together. Him and Panisi could work good together. Him and you know uh, Liam can work good together. They give you some athletes. I mean, four three four and three three four four you front. You just like I said about Jay Knife with the Pistons. You just gotta find a way to make it work. But man, you gotta find a way, man. You know, if you had to ask me, bro, like you said, man. Who you, who you want off this draft so far, man? Kayvon, Kayvon Kimbledo, Malik Willis, and Jordan Davis is, you know, my favorite player so far. I ain't been deep in studying, but, you know, I think I think Davis and, and, and with the Kayvon Kimbledo, Davis, and I mean, even Kenneth Walker can give you some explosion, bro. That's what the Lions need. That's what we lacking. Elite talent and explosive talent, but uh, this, this kid is phenomenal, bro. Tape is phenomenal, you know. Stature is phenomenal. Athleticism is phenomenal. I mean, Lions got some decisions to make, bro. And that's a good thing. You know, you're sitting here with two picks in this round. And you could turn around into a first pick. You could turn, you could get him, you know, they need first pick for Jared Goff. I mean, you just figure it out. Bring in a British guy like Teddy and figure it out. You know, Hawkinson is Swift. Can you trade them and turn them into assets? It's a cool question. Like I said, I don't want to trade Hawkinson, but he's been injured and he's been underutilized. So. I mean, that's the question. So we'll see exactly what happened. But you added, you know, also Wilson and Olav and Pickens and Meacham and Jamison. It's a lot of young receivers here. Dotson, I mean, you find a guy that's going to be the guy. If that's the, if you find a guy that can, you know, be the guy, eventually, I mean, your offense is deadly. Don't forget you got Cephas in your back pocket. Amar Ross looking like a reliable number one and number two in the slot. Uh, Josh Reynolds, you bring him back, he's going to take you to church too. He's going to stretch the field. And then you get number one, got to do everything. You got Hawkinson working. In the tight end position, you know, if you keep Swift around, you got him working out the backfield. So, very interesting, man. But, hey, let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And the subscribe button. It's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Free your chance. Get notifications. We go live. We drop a video. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app. Dollar sign. CJ Good 313. Venmo. CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Um, other than that, man, check out Detroit Lions Talk Playlist. Let me know what you girls and guys think. You can find my main channel around YouTube, Goodfella TV. Right on YouTube, man. Check me out on Spotify, Good Fella TV podcast. But yeah, let me know what you girls and guys think. Some of the favorite guys y'all like in the comment section. Y'all want to see me a uh, couple.